what I tend to do before I clean them. A little bit of grinding paste. Yeah. All that is, <clears throat> is the same size ball bearing as that. Yeah. Just welded on the end of a screwdriver. Right, so that's your main feed pump. So the oil comes from the tank into there. That is your rear camshaft on the rear cylinder. Comes out the casing, well you can see it on this one. Comes out the casing there. So that's that, yeah? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's obviously turning all the time the engine's running. That fits in there and turns your oil pump. Yeah? Okay. So that's the basics of that, how it's fed, or how it's driven. Right, so you've got two with flat heads one with a dome head, yeah? Okay. They're actually different sizes, I believe, if I remember rightly, so you can't get that wrong. So you've got a lightweight spring. See that crap in there? That's metal. So that's why you have to split and take them all apart. 3 8 ball bearing. All the ball bearings in these are the same size. Right, now those two, just, they are regulators of sorts in the oil pump but they're non-adjustable you can't do anything with them yeah okay okay so the other one different spring i'm sure they're different sizes or something see that's loose in there so you can't put it in the wrong hole if you if you notice it's loose it's wrong now this one has got an adjuster in it so that comes out Much larger section spring. Don't think the ball bearing comes. Oh, it does come out. Okay. Another ball bearing, yeah? So that's those three. Now, to get this out, that's your actual pump rotor. See there? See the angle on that tooth? And the angle on that tooth? Yeah. And see that gap there? Okay, so that tooth is forced out against that wall of the casing. So as it comes round, there's a gap there that's concentric. So that pushes out on that spring, and forces the oil round the pump till it goes to the outlet on the other side. Okay. These can be a bit of a bitch to get apart sometimes. Oh, he's going, that's alright. So you've got one vein, your spring, which could do with another one by the looks of it, so a bit broken. And that's your other vein, yeah? And that these can be very, very stuck in there because of the oil around them. And generally they will come out. There you go. So that's that, okay? So there are all your passages inside that feed and receive the oil. Now here, it's the only other important bit in them. Now that's the other side. See it's moving? It goes in and out. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's basically is a centrifugal release valve. 
So if it builds up too much pressure, starts going funny, that's what that will do. So as long as that hasn't fallen off, it's moving, you're okay. It has to move. If you spray it up, it'll probably rattle side to side. Hear it? Yeah. So that has to be moving. The only reason why it wouldn't be moving? Coked up with shit again. You know, years and years and years and years of use, it could have got jammed up. So if it's not moving, the best thing to do is take it apart and clean it. You can't. Oh yeah, take your. You can't. You can get those out, but you have to smash them out. So, oh, okay. as long as you can get it to rattle like that, you're okay. And if you can't, get a new one. Okay. Because what it does, that little hole there. Is back pressure oil goes into there, forces that out, and locks the feed out one way or the other. That's all it is. So, <coughs> obviously, this all needs cleaning, which I won't do at the moment. Your basic assembly of the oil pump put your rotor back in. See, that always goes in that way. That inner hole, can you see that lip there, look? Okay. Right, that is machined to your perfect round, which holds the back face of that. You can see where it runs in it, on the bright side, yeah? yeah. The outer face has got your concentric on it. So when that's in there, look, you've got your gap. That's your, basically, is your oil pump. Yeah. As those teeth go round, in the vein, which goes that way. Yeah, see that tooth is basically sticking up more. Yeah. So that's forced outwards by your spring in the middle. So you've got one going that way and one going that way. They both face outwards, doesn't matter which way they go. So if you put that one on that one, it's the same way round, yeah? Yeah. So that's that. So that's your basic pump rotor. Can't do any more with that unless it's severely, severely rusted or worn or got holes all over it. That's generally, there's nothing you can do with those, yeah? Obviously clean them all out. I've got a tool I made years ago. What I tend to do before I clean them, a little bit of grinding paste. Yeah. All that is, <clears throat> is the same size ball bearing as that. Just welded on the end of a screwdriver. So a little bit of grinding paste on the end. Pop it down each hole. Doesn't matter which one, they're all the same size. And just give them a rub round. Because this is only cast iron, it's soft. And that will seat the ball bearing. You have it in case there's any rubbish or crap in there. So go over all three. It's all it takes, just few turns because it's soft as anything that's it literally for that and obviously you'll flush it all through with petrol clean it all right assembly again we've done that bit this those two are exactly the same you've got one goes in there Spring goes in, making sure that, that see the recess in the cap, you want to make sure that your spring's in that recess. See it go over it there? Yeah. That's that. As long as it's gone in there and it hasn't gone in like bent or sideways. Nothing else to do with that one, just do him up. Same with that one. All goes in, spring goes on, making sure that you're in your cap again. Yeah. That's that. Right, that's the, this is the only one that matters. So basically it's just exactly the same. Ball bearing goes in. Spring goes in. Cap goes on. Well, it's not the cap. But if you look at that, one's got a slot all the way down to there, yeah? And that one has only got a slot down to there. Now when you're trying to do that up, 
don't try and put the screwdriver in the in the narrower one the long slot because it will force the screw head open yeah. and you can't do it up so always go in the big slot when you're doing it up yeah so that goes in so that will screw in if you put the screwdriver in that way locks up straight away because it's forcing the head apart yeah. so you have to go in the big side right that is your only adjustment on it it should be the top of that screw yeah, yeah. So you can screw them in should be three eighths of an inch below the surface of the pump okay so you get a depth gauge I mean I've got this it doesn't matter what you use you can mark it on a bit of rod you know drop dropper mm. mark it on the end of a screwdriver with a masking tape as long as you're lined up with that top face to that you keep screwing it up and down till you get three eighths of an inch from the top surface That's three eighths. Obviously, you have to wiggle it around up and down. Just make sure you're bang on three eighths of an inch. Then that is literally just a cap that goes over the end. So basically, that's your oil pump build and construction. There's nothing major to them at all. Bit of a fallacy, people get frightened of them, but nothing to worry about at all. So those two ball bearings, as long as those springs aren't you know you can see physically if they're stretched bent worn out you know in um in the reference manual i think it gives you lengths of springs and things to check but i've done so many of them i know they're okay doesn't matter which ball bearing goes in which hole the only one that matters is that one with the round cap as long as that plunger is set three eighths of an inch down before you put <clears> the cap on you'll be fine what would be the repercussions if you got the depth wrong on it? Just wrong oil pressure. Okay. It's, you know, it's a regulator, pressure regulator. Um, I mean, people wind them up, wind them down, do whatever they want with them, but realistically, it's not that critical. It is critical, but if you want to try and blow a load, you know, if you're racing one, I suppose you'd pump your oil pressure up a little bit more, um, but it will just leak more. That's all it will do. It will just make it leak more. If they've got any water in them or had water in them, look for any ridges or lumps or circles where it's just been sat down in there, you know? That one looks alright. But these are just standard. Go to the bike shop, push bike shop and get a 3 8 ball bearing. I don't know if you can just see that. It's very, very hard to see. See that line there? Maybe that's a ridge well, it's not a ridge it's a mark on the ball bearing it's just running around there look. see there's another scuff mark there that means it's caught on a on a ledge somewhere in one of those holes yeah so you rub that out put new ball bearings in it it's going to cost you 15p for three ball bearings you know yeah. so it's a no-brainer not to put ball bearings in them if in doubt change it out well yeah for the money, it's no money, is it? It's, it's pennies, isn't it? I've got a big box of them over there, so yeah, that one's marked a bit as well. You can just see a line there. It's hard to see in the light, but I can I can just see it very slightly. So they have been just picking up somewhere, yeah. Which is why you just rub your ledge out. See, look, these are so soft, the casings, it will just dig itself in and form a ridge around the top. How many rotations would you say to use in or five or six that's fine yeah it'll just like i say they're soft it's like cheese they're as yeah. soft as anything just take that lip off put new ball bearings in and pretty much nine times out of ten unless this has got so much water in it it's rotted the actual bottom of the things out and they've got holes in them which you can see if you start looking carefully that would actually come out of there but there can be a pig to get back in so 
basically you just got to look down them holes if you can see anything major untoward which you can't really see it but it's hard to tell oh that one you can see is yeah right. see that's a big lump of aluminium in there it's not good is it? well it'll be some of the grinding paste but mostly that was aluminium see that taper and it's very hard to see and it's much the same as grinding your valves and you know when I said it goes that dull grey colour yeah you just want that to look dull grey all the way around and then you know you've seated the ball in properly yeah but like I say if you do it with that screw or I think Jim's do a tool to do it Jim's tool but if not if you've got a welder it's an easy thing to make you can see that line around it look that's when you know it's seated in properly as well so when you put your valve grinding paste on, turn it a few times, pull it out. If it looks nice and grey all the way around the end of the tool as well, you know you're about there. Yeah. So basically that's your oil pump 101. There isn't anything technical in there at all. Um, as long as your springs are okay, as long as that pop-off valve is working, and your ball bearings are in reasonable condition, I mean, it is, what I do is probably overkill. People, A lot of people won't do that. But if you can do it, it makes sense to do it. Yeah, it's not a big job, is it? No, no, not at all. As long as that spring's okay, because that's forcing your veins out in the offs on the concentric on that. Um, as long as that's okay, set three eighths of an inch down from the top with the cap off, just on that back one. So generally put that one in first. That gives you your three eighths of an inch. And you just balance on there so you know that's right. Um, and that is it, that is it, it's just making sure it's nice and clean all the way through, you know. Next week on the workshop. That should be a nice smooth taper, yeah? And when it sits in, inside that hole, that bit, yeah. Right, as that goes in there, as the float comes up, that should just, it should be probably sitting about there. So it's all basically, it's worn out. So that's never ever going to seal.